is reality, real? Or, could we be living in a sophisticated simulation? Could the universe be more like a dream than we ever imagined? Remember, you are the dreamer, you build this world. How can science help us answer these questions? Welcome to the Simulation Hypothesis. Have you ever had a dream, Neo, that you were so sure was real? What if you were unable to wake from that dream? How would you know the difference between the dream world and the real world? What if you woke up one day and discovered that everything you've always taken for granted is not what it seems at all? What you thought was reality is actually a simulation, a very complex, sophisticated illusion that you live inside of. Even solid matter itself is no more real than, say, a rock that you would pick up in a dream. And not only are you living in a simulation, but it's being generated by a system that you can contact with your mind and actually change the simulation itself, in effect, hacking the universe. What would you do to change the world? Well, recent scientific discoveries are strongly suggesting that this is the case, that we live inside a simulation, and that we, as observers, have a demonstrable power over it. We are actually participating in the creation of the reality that we live in. Wait, what? Are we really living in a simulation? Well, this is the conclusion that physicists and cosmologists have been coming to. And although this idea would have been ridiculed in the recent past, it is now being taken very seriously. Cutting-edge physics experiments have been producing some very strange results. Results that say our universe isn't an objective reality but that it's actually emerging from something else, something non-physical and beyond our senses. In the digital age, science is beginning to see a correlation between our world and the world of a virtual reality. The Matrix is everywhere. It is all around us. Even now, in this very room. You can see it when you look out your window, or when you turn on your television. Plato versus Democritus? What do these guys have to do with anything? I thought we were talking about science, not philosophy. Well, all scientific inquiries are based on one or more philosophical positions. So let's quickly go over some of the philosophical arguments that different scientific approaches are built upon. Ancient Greek philosophers already had the basic idea of the atom and they used this idea to help them explain how reality worked. Out of all their various conversations, several very different views emerged. These views are best expressed in the works of Plato and Democritus. Democritus built his philosophy of materialism on the assumption that atoms are eternal, indestructible, and are the only things that really exist. All other things exist, said Democritus, only because they are composed of atoms. Following this logic leads you to believe that consciousness is a product of physical processes in the brain. This is the philosophical assumption that Isaac Newton, Charles Darwin, and most Western scientists until very recently built their work on. Plato built his philosophy of idealism on the assumption that the basic underlying structure of everything isn't the atom, but abstract mental forms that determine an object's properties. Plato believed that ideas are more fundamental than objects. For instance, a perfect or ideal sphere exists only as an abstract mental form or idea. Any sphere that we see in the world, like a basketball, is simply an approximation of the ideal sphere. By following this logic, you come to believe that consciousness is primary and gives rise to all physical matter and process. In other words, everything begins with consciousness, and there is a mind behind what we experience as physical matter. In much the same way that when you dream, 
Your mind is creating a physical experience for you while you sleep. As you can see, these philosophies are mutually exclusive and are in fact opposites. Both cannot be true. Either mind gives rise to matter or matter gives rise to mind. It's a very, very old debate. But science has finally harnessed enough power to settle it once and for all. The scientific hypothesis that our world is virtual or dreamlike has been explored in depth by many scientists, including Dr. Brian Whitworth. He took the two opposing views, one being materialism, that our universe is entirely physical, exists in and of itself and needs nothing outside of it to explain it, and the other being the simulation hypothesis, that our universe exists as a virtual construct and depends on information processing happening outside of space-time. Dr. Whitworth looked at all the facts that have been gathered from experimental results and asked which view better fits these facts. After a thorough analysis, his conclusion was that the data much better fits the simulation hypothesis. Right now, we're inside a computer program? Scientifically, our universe simply makes more sense when viewed as a virtual construct emerging from consciousness rather than simply matter existing independently of the mind. This isn't real. What is real? How do you define real? The analysis starts at the beginning, with the Big Bang. This well-established cosmological model demonstrates that space-time was created by a single event billions of years ago and expanded into what we see around us today. Nearly all scientists agree that our universe began to exist at one point in the distant past. From the materialist view that our universe is all there is, as an objective, independent reality, the fact that the Big Bang came from nothing is very hard to explain. How could everything come from nothing? But if you look at the universe as a virtual construct, the Big Bang model works perfectly. Virtual worlds always begin with an information influx from a zero state, since they need to initially boot up. Every time a computer game starts up, a Big Bang occurs from the perspective of the game. From inside the virtual world itself, the creation always comes from nothing, because before it boots up, there is no space or time as defined by the rules of that virtual world. Another thing to consider is quantum bits. The fact that light is quantized as photons, electricity as electrons, etc., better fits the hypothesis that we live in a virtual construct. Because in digital processing, all data must have a minimal quantity, represented by bits or pixels and our world displays the same property. Every computer-generated image breaks down into pixels when examined closely. And this is what science has found in nature. In the past century, physicists have discovered that matter really is quantized, composed of fundamental, indivisible particles billions of times smaller than an atom. And, as science has discovered more and more about the way the universe behaves, it has become clear that nature is a matrix of computable bits. Space is quantized, time is quantized, energy is quantized. Everything is made of individual bits, which means the universe has a finite number of components, which means it has a finite number of states, which means it's computable. If the true nature of the universe is indeed digital, that we do in fact have quantum bits of space and time, and that there's nothing that you cannot compute, and at the moment there is no evidence against this, then it's entirely consistent with the simulation hypothesis. Well, how does living in a virtual reality benefit me? Do I get superpowers? Can reality be hacked? Can we reprogram nature and take control of our experience? Are we, in a sense, already doing this, but simply unaware of it? Okay, for the sake of argument, let's say the data does fit the simulation hypothesis better than it fits materialism. That's all well and good. But is there any solid evidence of computer programming in nature? It seems there is. 
Theoretical physicist James Gates has actually found computer code hidden deeply in the equations that describe supersymmetry. So you're saying as you dig deeper, you find computer code writ in the fabric of the cosmos. Into the equations that we want to use to describe the cosmos, yes. Computer code. Computer code, strings of bits of ones and zeros. It's not just sort of resembles computer code, you're saying it is computer code. It's not even just is computer code, it's a special kind of computer code that was invented by a scientist named Claude Shannon in the 1940s. So, so are you saying we are all just, there's some entity that programmed the universe and we're just expressions of their code?